I've had at least a few people bring this up in the comments and in our Discord, and here I am, finally bloody talking about it. This is the first video in the series actually dedicated to something directly Strahd related, which is interesting. <laughs> I find people talk about Strahd, you know, too much and don't focus on the littler things in the campaign that are just as important as Strahd himself. It's a perfectly fine to fanboy over Strahd. He's the best villain that I've ever seen in a D&D &D campaign. Go at it, man. Fanboy like hell. Nevertheless, this is a huge moment of the campaign, one that when done right, will be very rewarding for everyone. Welcome to the most popular series on our channel, folks. Time to get down to business. So first of all, I wanted to talk about what I personally did and explain how effective all of it was. I'll get into some more properly useful advice once I've talked about my experience with it, but I just wanted to run you all through how I personally did it and what came out of it. Strahd, when the party were levels 3 or 4 after the Death House, sometime around that, decided to watch a fight that the party were having and assess their strength. After determining that they were still weak, he invited them to the castle, saying that he expected them within the next week. This created a, a pretty interesting dynamic, with the party feeling like they had a pretty important time limit, pushing them forward with the campaign. It didn't give them much room to breathe, but all the breathing room happened after the dinner. They tried to stall going into the castle as much as possible until they were levels 5 or 6, and they didn't have long to wait before they imagined Strahd would get mad. Cyrus waited on the party when they came in, and Strahd was at the head of the table, and the conversations began. The food wasn't poisoned or anything fancy like that, even though the cleric obviously had to check. Strahd engaged them in casual conversation for a while, asking them what their lives were like before arriving in Barovia. I think uh, arriving is a very good word for that sort of situation. It can definitely provoke a party member to just go, ARRIVING! Fuck you. This was him trying to assess if anyone in the party would be able to replace him as Barovia's le leader, which, of course, was obviously fruitless. Uh, he was genuinely a rather good host for five minutes, engaging people in conversation well and the like. It did devolve at some point, though. Strahd started getting irritated that nobody in the party was looking like they were scared of him, so he started talking a bit more morbidly, like how, ooh, I'd love to see your... Uh, everyone's names in a graveyard. It devolved into threats, scare tactics, and him going a little berserk and throwing a hissy fit. He composed himself, let the party know that they're free to explore, and made his leave. From there, the party wandered the castle a bit before eventually they left too. So there you go, that's how I did it. There were things that worked and things that didn't, and I'll go over them. For starters, I think that the time limit was a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It resulted in my party wanting to push forward with the campaign, but I imagine it felt a little too much of a high-pressure environment. I think that despite, you know, Curse of Strahd being a very downer, we have one set objective here, uh, campaign, there should still be moments for them to breathe and enjoy the game and kind of the chill out a little bit at least, and I feel as though my time limit didn't let them do that until about session 10 into the campaign, which is... Just not okay. I feel like I could have done a better job on that front. I would perhaps introduce the dinner a little later than I did with less of that time limit. Having no t set time might actually encourage a party to go there sooner because it could, you know, they, they might not be sure how angry Strahd would get otherwise. They might, like, get the invitation and be like, huh, so when does he want us? I don't know. Probably, like, tonight, right? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> that sort of thing. Having them feel like they have to do what Strahd says is great. Makes them feel like a proper Barovian. <laughs> Welcome to Barovia, where you must submit to the devil. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to get tortured. <laughs> the way the letter could be de uh, delivered is a very interesting thing. I had Strahd himself act as the messenger, which was a bad idea. I, I don't think he should do that. Strahd is feels too high up and egotistical of himself to actually go out and message directly to the party. He's gonna get someone else to do it. I'd probably use either, you know, Rahadin or a vampire spawn to do it, uh, or have it inconspicuously appear after completing a big quest. I believe there are a few different occasions where an invite can be sent in the book itself, like in events and stuff, although I've never used them. So, I think in terms of the actual dinner itself, I can't offer much big advice. Each Strahd is a little different, and each DM running one is different. However, I can tell you some cool things you could try. Maybe try and charm the character in the party who would be the most susceptible, that could be, you know, 
that could be very fun to play around with. I, I, I was almost going to try and do it, but everyone's wisdom saves were really fat. Like, the only one that wasn't would have immediately revealed everything going wrong. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, you could kind of act, because the charm lasts 24 hours. Like, it, it, the next day, like, they're still acting really buddy-buddy to Strahd, and they're like, you know what? He does mean well, doesn't he? His, his people, they hate him, and with good reason. But in the end, don't you think he's had a lot to go through? And frankly, maybe he could change, etc., etc. <laughs> You could have him in the middle of the party, or not party, just dinner, offer him to maybe play a song on his organs. While Strahd plays his little ditty on the organ, he could you could specifically describe that his back is turned to the party the entire time. Maybe prompting them to try something, get a few whispered conversations in, maybe make them kind of look around awkwardly because they're like, oh, he's definitely scrying on us or some shit. Could allow the players to try and pull a little sneaky on him. I think it would be cool for him to ask the party for maybe, like, improvements on Barovia. How's the place? How's your stay been? Has it been nice? Do you think I could have done anything better? It could definitely prompt a party member to be like, uh, it's an awful place. It sucks. Why are you doing this? <laughs> that sort of thing. I would most definitely let the party know in character as Strahd that the invitation extends to the whole castle. Even if it isn't practical for Strahd to let them walk around, he would love watching them fumble around the huge place at a lower level and just tempt them. Like, maybe you could say, you know, one of your relics is here that you need. So, um, I mean, if you want it now, come get it now. But if you don't, I might take it. <laughs> that sort of thing. He won't actually take it. Why would he? Well, he would. There's a reason he would, but Strahd wouldn't. I found that even when someone isn't offering, you know, like, direct advice and they're kind of just explaining what they did, it can spark a lot of ideas in my mind, and hopefully this helped you, even in a very small way. If it did, please like and subscribe for more, please. You could also talk to me, I am very lonely, so a comment would be nice, or maybe you could even join our Discord that is in the description. Well, that's the end of the video. Sad to say goodbye, but... <laughs> <coughs> It must be done. See ya.